There's a saying, the customer is always right. But is that really the case? The customer is usually always right, even if they're wrong. Why is that? Because we need the customer for our business to grow. Their positive words hmm, may or may not affect us, but if they have a positive experience, they will come back and support you. Now, it's their negative experience that you really need to be concerned about because not only will you lose a potential customer, they're going to tell their associates, and that's more business and very damaging on your business. So even if there's a miscommunication with a customer, as an entrepreneur, you'll want to make an effort to make it right, to meet them where their expectations are so that you can let them walk away saying positive things about you. After all, customer service and the customer service experience that our clients and our customers have can make the difference between business success and business failure. Now, who am I? I'm Tia. I'm the founder of the Black Entrepreneurs Network and the host of this amazing program, Entrepreneur Insider. We come to you every week with features of entrepreneurs of color that are doing exciting things in their business, in their community, and we want to bring them to your attention so you can support them, so you can share them, and so we all can grow as a community. Today, this episode, I had one goal. Now, of course, I have some other goals, but the one goal for today <laughs> is to stop talking about customer service and how bad or how good it is in our communities of color, but to actually do something about it. Change starts with each one of us. We don't have to have the same steps or the same methods, but we can't just stop at talking about what works and what doesn't work. We actually have to start taking action. So I'm ex super excited. Today's episode is going to come to you a little bit different than our previous episodes. In today's episode, we have a panel of amazing entrepreneurs of color. They cover several different industries, but they all have customers. Heck, they all are customers. <laughs> so we're going to spend a few minutes talking about what customer service is, what the expectations are, do we all start at the same level, and how to maybe address some of those things that we all experience. So that way, we can stop posting on social media about the things that aren't so good and start providing some wow experiences and encourage the entrepreneurs of color that maybe don't have such positive experiences. Thank you so much for watching. I know you'll provide, get amazing value, sorry, from this interview. Stay tuned at the end. And of course, let us know if you have any questions and drop your feedback down below. You know, a lot of times, and I know we've all seen it, we've all done it, right? We complain about customer service experiences. We're on Facebook and we see those posts. I hate black businesses. I'll never black businesses, blah, 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 right? But no one ever comes up with real solutions, which is, again, another reason why I formed this group. So today, my goal is, one, if even if we're not going to solve the problem, which we're probably not, maybe we can come up with solutions that can help us in our own business with our own customer service practices. But two, to encourage each of you at least to connect with one other entrepreneur of color to help them with their business. Because as we all reach each person, then we can help with customer service practices in businesses of color. So I'm going to start. Now, like I said, you all are welcome to come off mute. If you want, you're, you're not in a quiet place or you just feel more comfortable chatting, you're welcome to do that as well. I just won't be able to really moderate and do chat, but I want to hear from you all first and foremost, right? What is customer service and what does it mean to you? Being recognized as a customer for one and for two, just being treated how you would want to be treated. Okay. Okay. Now I was going to say there's an element of professionalism involved. There's an element of courtesy, respect, mutual respect. And um, when it comes to customer service, customer service doesn't equate to getting exactly what you want just because you want it. But 
be treated with courtesy, professionalism and respect, regardless of whether you get what you want or not. That's exactly what I was going to say, Kiki. I was going to say customer service to me is um, treating your, you know, your patrons, your customers or whoever they are. They may not necessarily be people who buy something from you specifically. Um, as you know, I'm in an industry that's more of a streaming, you know, viewing network. Um, but it's about treating those who patronize your business with respect and with courtesy and, um, you know, just acknowledging, you know, the fact that they even gave, you know, gave your business an opportunity to, you know, to get business. Shannon, were you, oh, go ahead, Shannon. Oh, um, yeah, I was going to say, um, to me, customer service, uh, for me, is for someone to show that they value me that you know that they're not just looking at me just as a price tag or just you know just making some money but they actually see me they value me and you know they're treating me as if they want you know, how they want. so let me ask you all is customer service mean the same thing if you are the customer versus whether you're the person providing the service yes 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 Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And um, can I share something? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's funny that you brought this up because I came across a post on Facebook that I was actually going to share in the Black Educate Black Edu Entrepreneurs Network Facebook group. Sorry, y'all. I'm dual minded right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, the the post was a screenshot actually of I guess um, a DM conversation between a customer and a business owner. Um, in this case, it was a hairstylist, and the customer like reached out to the hairstylist and said, "You know, I would like to get my hair done. Or, um, are you available this day?" And the response was, um, "My booking info is in my profile." Mm. Um, like really flat, like no, they are reaching out. It's just like my booking info is in my profile. And then the exchange went on even further where like the, the, the customer was reaching out, like asking questions and the stylist was really like, not, not nice. <laughs> she was, she was pretty rude. Um, on top of the fact that she also wanted this this customer to wash and blow dry and flat iron her hair before she came to get her hair done. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but it the you know, it's been it's been shared, I guess, on Facebook as, you know, oh, this this um, business owner is rude. But to me, what I saw in that is not really seeing that our customers are supporting us just like we are providing a service. And I think a lot of times um, some business owners get the game kind of twisted. Like I'm doing something for you, you need something from me. But it's really a, a mutual relationship. And as some others have said, it has to be a relationship. Even if you only purchase from me one time, that is a relationship. That is you telling me what your needs are, me providing your needs, and then you know you compensating me for my services or my my goods. But it has to be that relationship back and forth. And I think that you know there are a lot of people who get the game twisted and think that you know it's all about me and you gotta you gotta work within my schedule. You and and that, that can you can have boundaries, <laughs> but you also have to. You can. It doesn't take that much to say thank you for reaching out. It, it doesn't take that much to say thank you. Period. Exactly. I was going to agree with uh, what Keisha was saying. I think that's a great point. Um, and I, I think about this a lot. And just because, well, my former background before I really stepped into design full time, I worked in restaurant management, and customer service is huge. Um, I used to train um, servers on the front line. And a lot of times what you see when there is a, a customer service lapse is really just the frame of mind um, of, of like, you know, wh what the focus is, right? A lot of times when businesses fail in customer service because they're a lot of times just focusing on themselves, right? They're focusing on, um, you know, not, they're, they're focusing on, you um, what am I trying to say? I just had it. I lost it. But no, they, they focus on like not being, you know, just getting inconvenienced or something not going in the way they want it to go, you know. But when you're others focused, 
you know, it, the number one thing people care about when they come to your business is like, do you respect my time? Do you respect my money? And like, if as long, most of the time, if you like can hit those boxes, like, yes, it's, I can see that they're respecting my time, respecting my money. You're going to have a generally positive customer service experience. I like the others focused. Good job, RJ. Love it. Sorry, not good job. I mean, sorry. Go ahead, Alyssa. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it seems to me that sometimes we take that analogy of family too far. I mean, when we're in a business mm. situation, I'm not your cousin. We don't have history. So you can't just come off and say something crazy to me and I'm trying to do business with you. So to me, it just professionalism does not have to mean we're being cold or sedity or whatever labels they want to put on you. This is just a professional interaction. Treat me like you want me to treat you in a store. And I don't care what color you are. I want to be treated that way by everybody. Exactly. Totally agree. Um, Kiki? Yeah, um, I was just going to say that um, I think a lot of times people forget that there are customers as well as service providers or product providers and things like that. Yeah, we, we do straddle both sides of the fence. So just like what Carlo was saying, it's like, you know, you treat people how you would want to be treated. Because everybody here is a customer as well as someone that's providing a service or someone that has customers. So it's important to realize that you are on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things that I believe that customer services and I also try to do myself is to help the customer to have a positive experience with my business. And another thing is, is that when you are a customer, I one of the things I love about like Lyft is, is that you could rate uh, not only the driver, but you could also rate the um, person that was in your car. And because sometimes you may have an experience, you may have awesome services and uh, give them an awesome experience, but sometimes people are in it to, you know, get what they can. There are people that are in it to be um, <laughs> lifetime uh, lawsuit, bringing lifetime lawsuits to people and they do that for a living. And so um, I really do think it's a mutual thing that people um, should all participate in when you, they come to your business. One of the things that I always apply whenever I'm um, deciding whether or not, you know, my customer service was good or even some of my team member customer service was um, up to par is their ability to listen and analyze. Um, you know, being able to listen to your customer and then being able to provide them with a quality answer that helps them, I think is, mo is most important. You know, whether they they end up being a customer of yours or not, you know, be, I think that um, that relationship will kind of foster, I believe someone else mentioned um, the importance of building relationships. I think that relationship will foster with that client as long as you listen and are able to provide an answer that is able to help them. Okay, great job. And Carla, did you have your hand up? Oh yeah, okay. I was um, just saying, uh, well, wanted to piggyback off of the, um, the Facebook post that Keisha was mentioning that to me, it sounded like the beautician is has gotten to a point to where her business is now booming. She's not hungry like she was in the beginning. So therefore in the beginning, she was providing that good customer service to everybody. And that's the one thing we have to remember as an entrepreneur and as a business owner that we always got to keep that same hungry mentality to keep that same customer service going. Because once you get to a point and you forget that, oh, well, I have enough business now that I can pick and choose, you know, who I want to do business with or what type of business I want to have. But you still have to do that, that same customer service that you started out with um, to get that business to build to where you got to now. And that's one of the things that we generally forget is that, you know, we still got to remember to be humble, Um to the people that we come in contact with because it could have been someone that we've had this rapport with for years and had this relationship with. And all it takes is just one wrong comment 
or one wrong way that you treat them. And then they're like, oh, okay, so this is how you want to be. And I've been with you since day one. It's time for me to step and move on. And when they do that, they take others with them. So, you know, you got to remember whether it's a new person or somebody you've been working with for years, you still have to treat them the same. Because other than that, you know, as as quickly as we rose is as quickly as we fall. And we actually fall faster <laughs> because we forget exactly. about that customer service that we've been providing. If you've been handholding somebody ever since day one, still keep with that handholding. You know, that's how you got them. That's how you won them over. So that's that's the one thing I, I truly value in customer service and always try to keep and remember that because if I'm not going to be honest with myself about it, then I can't give my customers the same service. Okay, perfect. You said a couple of things I want to touch on um, in a second. Nick, so before I get back to you, um, uh, my next question, Nick, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, um, I totally agree with the caller and uh, the thing is, with customer service, it's uh, really important for businesses to have a good one because that's what separates them from their competitors. And if you have a good customer service, that will lead to your customers bringing more business to you. And uh, if you have a terrible one, as Carla said, you end up losing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you all hit the nail right on the head, right? There is a difference between customer service that's good and customer service that's bad. And even though, even Walmart, who sometimes has the worst customer service, they may not seem like they lose customers, but I've met people that will like, I will never shop at Walmart. I will pay more money to go to Walgreens or CVS to get whatever I need versus going to Walmart. So for a small business, it's even more important that we have um, positive customer service and customer service plans. Um, And I know many of you that know me and have talked to me, I always kind of talk about business planning and putting a foundation in place. But let me ask you all, how many, and you can raise your hand, um, how many of you actually have a customer service plan as part of your business? And a customer service plan, just to make sure everyone knows I'm on the same page as me, You know, your plan includes who your customer is, um, not just where you obtain the customer, but how you deal with them. So, for example, do you have an autoresponder if someone messages you on Facebook that gives them your hours or asks them a question? Um, Do you have... um, people in place, like a customer support system, people to answer the phone for you or work on your behalf to make sure that customers are addressed in a timely manner? Do you even say like, how quickly do I respond to inquiries? How do I respond to negative feedback? Do I have a plan to send out surveys to get any type of feedback? All of those things, do you have a plan that involves the customer that you deal with in your business? Yes or no? You can raise your hand, you can come off mute. I don't okay. have a plan per se, Thea. Um, I, I mean, I do have something. It's nothing written down. It is, I, I do have a mental, um, I guess, coming from a customer customer service background, um, working, you know, in the corporate world at one point. Um, I still work in the corporate world, but not in customer service. But I know they have, like, things called SLA, service level agreements, in which, you know, you have to solve the customer's problem or issue or try to solve it within a certain time frame. And so I, I did apply something similar to my business in which if somebody does reach out to me, I do try to reach back out to you know the customer or with any communication, whether it's chat or whether it's email or, or, what, or whatnot, within 24, um, within 24 hours or business hours, I'll say, because sometimes I don't always do it on the weekend, but usually within 24 business hours. Um, 48 at the max, because I don't want people to forget that, you know, hey, well, this dude just completely ignored me. And I've had that issue before where I've had, I've reached out to customers or reach out to businesses and have never gotten responses. They'll, they'll email me back or call me back like two, three weeks later. And I'm like, I don't even want to talk to you no more. I don't even want to you know, patronize your business. So I, you know, I guess that's part of my customer service plan, per se. Um, but no, I don't actually have anything written out in like, you know, oh, this is the actual format of my plane for customer service. Okay. Yeah, I, I was going to echo that because, um, yeah, nothing written down, but I have a good idea of how I'm going to service my clients and deal with inquiries and things like that. I have a good idea of what 
I have in mind to how to handle that, but nothing written down. Okay. Yeah, I think this is my first time honestly hearing about a plan, right? I think that's a really good thing because like everybody in their head has like, okay, if something happens, like this is how I'm going to handle it. But the reality of business ownership is, you know, things are dynamic, you know, it's kind of like an art and not necessarily just like a science, right? Like people, the, the reality is we're dealing with people, people come with different things and, you know, your, your business can change like this and it might demand a different level of customer service, you know, cause like, honestly, the, one of the first signs that, you know, your cut, your customer service is slipping is like when you're, when you're quote unquote understaffed, right. When your business is growing, like if like, that's one of the main reasons people experience bad customer service because there's just too many people to service the, the amount of customers coming in adequately. So like, uh, I always tell people like, Hey, like, if, if you can afford to get help, get help. <laughs> right. Because, um, you know, take less of a take less of a cut and, and, and bring somebody else in because your business is growing similar to what, uh, you know, you guys are talking about with that Facebook post. Right. Like if you can't handle the amount of people coming in, you're going to your, your business going to go up and go right back down. Right. So, like, if you can take less of a profit and bring some people on and help do so because it's going to save your business in the long run and it and it really helps your business go from that gap of being really small and then that that awkward it's always that awkward middle phase you're getting some growth and you know you're getting some more people coming in more eyes on your business and then it's the, the first thing that slips customer service but i really love the the fact that you know we're talking about plans about like how to specifically you know written down how to your customer service checkpoint so i think that's a great point to bring up yeah. And a plan doesn't have to be really complicated, just so everyone knows. A plan really is to make sure that as you grow, as RJ just kind of mentioned, the person that joins your team, whether they're a VA or an employee or whoever they are, your mom that's answering the phone, that they carry out your business the same way that you do. And then if you were to, God forbid, get hit by a milk truck, tomorrow your business can keep going, you know, by whoever you put in in place to um, keep going. So it doesn't have to be a complicated plan. So I don't want anybody to think that it has to be. Okay, so here's my next question. I know you all say like people that have business that get too big forget how to deal with their customers. But the reality is a lot of the people that are just starting out don't know how to provide customer service. They don't know how to be professional. How do we get them to understand what professional means or how to provide customer service? Keisha, you have your hand up. Do you want to go ahead and answer that one first? Um, so I raised my hand to answer the, the other, the other one. I know, but the I'm question trying. and then ask me to answer it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but one of the things I wanted to say, and I guess this kind of ties in a little bit, is that um, Carla mentioned about when people leave a, a business and they take other people with them. And I think as Black entrepreneurs, it's very important that we understand word of mouth Um, can build our business Mm -hmm. or can break our business. And usually the people that are the loudest are the people that aren't satisfied. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's always in my mindset when not only that's not the reason why I give customer service, but that's in my mindset that I don't want this person to go and tell other people that they had a negative experience with me, even potential people or current customers. So it's important for me, not just for that personal interaction, but for future or potential interactions to, um, to focus on. Um, Similar to what Terrence was saying, I um, worked at IHOP. (laughs) And at IHOP, I'm pretty sure they don't do this anymore, but they did have a video where they just talked about how to speak to people, basically. And at the IHOP that I worked at, because I've not experienced this any others, we always had to say sir or ma'am, even to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, When we went into the kitchen to talk to the cook, we had to say, sir, may I speak and wait for him to, to acknowledge us. And that, that was not out of, you know, any type of hierarchy or anything like that, but basically make sure you hear me. And I make sure that, you know, I know that you're hearing me. So I can go in there and talk and walk away and he'd be like, what did she say? But if I say, sir, may I speak? And he says, go ahead. Then I know that he's listening to what I'm saying. Um, And that I think 
because we all were doing it, number one, it made it easier. And two, it created like this cohesive experience for the customers. Like the person that greeted them and sat them is calling them sir and ma'am. The person that's waiting on them called them sir and ma'am. The person that they bumped into as they were walking, you know, to their said sir or ma'am. And it just created that whole experience. It's kind of like Chick-fil-A when they, with the my pleasure thing. You know what I mean? If I go to a Chick-fil-A and they don't say my pleasure, I'm like, um, where's your manager? Right. <laughs> no, <you're right. laughs> And I know people who have worked at Chick-fil-A who are still saying my pleasure and they don't work there no more because it's just kind of been ingrained in them. So um, that probably did not answer your question. (laughs) It actually it actually did did, um, somewhat because you're right in terms of like training. it, It did. Okay. thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. And then you touched on other point, too. So that was great. Thank you. Well, my take on it is that, uh, first of all, if (laughs) someone doesn't know that uh, speaking to anybody in that capacity is kind of like, you know, you need to do some inner work, then that, you know, they shouldn't be in business. But um, the it, it, for me, and I know that this may not be um, uh, it, it may, may be frowned upon, but um, as far as customer service, we all as business owners, we start and a lot of us don't know anything when we get in the door. Some people do, but it's not the obligation of the customer or anybody else to learn these things to be able to provide for the experience. And so I believe in this scenario, it's just really about taking accountability and saying, okay, well, what does my business need? And then of course, getting out there and I know that you're not going to know all the questions or um, have all the answers to that, but getting out there and experiencing and learning uh, what is needed for your business to be successful is very important. So your own self accountability as a business owner is very important. Okay, perfect. Um, Really quick, Kiki, and I'm sorry, let me get your hand. When you all see people, like I know um, Keisha and Carla that, and anybody else that might've saw that, that Facebook post, right. You probably saw it for us. You couldn't reply to the originator, but does anybody feel like when they saw something like that, would you feel comfortable sending that business owner a DM to say, Hey, I happen to see this about you. Let me share a tip. Like I know Tyron sometimes tries to help people out and he doesn't always get the best reply, but do any of you ever feel comfortable reaching out to people saying, Hey, let me just put a bug in your ear. No, Keisha says, no, RJ's kind of thinking about it. Yeah. No, No, it, 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 it all, it all depends. I mean, if that service was directed at me, then yes, I'm super comfortable with that. (laughs) But if if it was like a forwarded post, then no, because a, I'm not trying to be funny, but you don't know how that post came about. These things can Mm. be forged. These things can be a meme or whatever. I'm just saying, I'm not saying that 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 one was, but I wouldn't just go inserting myself as some kind of, guru where it's not wanted no but if if it was directed at me i have absolutely no issues with that and i and i had that experience recently um the the i guess again (laughs) this might not be a popular opinion but especially when it comes to grown adults i don't buy that people don't know how to provide the basic customer service Mm. when it comes to grown adults and the reason why i say that is because like I said before, everybody is a customer. There's no accounting for, you know, disrespect or being rude. Everyone has a bad day. I understand that. And um, I have been a rude customer before, if I'm being 100% honest, um, when it wasn't called for, you know, just because of my frustrations and things like that. But um, so especially when we talk about grown people, that whole, you know, they don't know how to provide customer service. No, because if you just think about, okay, how do I want to be dealt with? And, and this is why I mentioned in the beginning, even if the answer is no, even if you can't help me, at the very least, let's be respectful about it. You know, that kind of thing. Everybody understands service with a smile. You know, that kind of thing. You know, if, I might not have to call you maybe sir or ma'am, like, you know, in, in, the, in, in I hope or whatever. But at least, you know, smile, please. Thank you. I apologize. I'm sorry. You know, that kind of thing. These things are not things that, I mean, you, we teach the babies that. So, um, so I, I, I don't necessarily, but now, and secondly, every place that I've worked for, from my first job at KFC to where I'm doing now, there's always an element of 
okay, customer service in, in the training in terms of, okay, this is how we deal with our customers, whether it's something specific as, you know, like you have to say, sir, may I speak and all that kind of stuff, or whether it's just, you know, smile when you're talking to the customer, look them in the face, all, all those kind of things, you know? So, um, yeah, I was, I was just going to say that in terms of that. So people can maybe fine tune some of that, but the basics, these are things you learn in your house at home. Saying See, please, okay. saying thank you. That, that's and what, that's I, what I was getting ready to say. I wanted yeah. to disagree with you, Kiki. In theory, yes, everybody should know, but mm-hmm. I think it boils down to a social skills. And Tia knows I always talk about social skills, yeah. the spectrum of social skills. But as a middle school teacher, I can tell you that not everybody knows how to talk to people (laughs) and it's not taught at home and it's not always something that can be fit in in school. Um, I am actually crusading Mm. more social skills teaching in school, but um, I do think that there are people who just really don't know how they come off or really don't know. It's not a malicious thing, but I just think they just really don't know. For me, my personal pet peeve as a customer is for the person who's serving me to tell me what time they get off or how tired they are. <laughs> like, I could you care know. less. This is a job that you chose. You came and asked for and, and accept it. Please don't tell, don't try to make me feel sorry because you have to do your job. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just my personal pet peeve. But it happens a lot. It happens to me a lot where I have to hear about, oh, I got two more hours before I get up. I don't care. So (laughs) I do know that that I don't think that that's something that is inherent in people. I think that with our society, the way it is, is so instant gratification and with social media and all of that stuff. I think people have kind of created their own social skills that that's might not be as inherent as it was where we like were in immer- we had that immersion experience i feel like i had an immersion experience on how to talk to people how to deal with people how to interact with people but now we're sitting behind computers or we're sitting behind phones and we're kind of you know we got these facebook gangsters that want to say whatever they can want to say without their picture or their real name you know what i mean so it's exactly. I, think, I think there are some people who don't know and Tia, in answer to your question, I feel like experience is the best teacher. Um, I have an issue with giving unsolicited advice because I get an attitude when it's not taken. And um, so I'm not going to reach out to somebody and say, hey, you really should have said this and this and that, but I'm going to let you feel it by not have, I'm never going to chase anybody to give them money. I'm never going to beg anybody to take my money. So if you're not going to provide that whole experience for me, I'm going to go to somebody else. And like Carla said, I'm going to take some people with me, or I'm going to let some people know that this is not what you want. And hopefully you're saying, why am I losing customers? What do I need to do differently? Let me find a course so I can be better. That's, that's my goal. Um, In the case of the Facebook, just to follow up, Mm -hmm. that young lady had to um, close her page. So I'm pretty sure she did get some feedback. All the feedback she got. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. I, um, and I'm going to, again, I'm going to open up because I know Alyssa, your hand is up and our goal, just so everyone knows, I'm going to close about 830. Just so um, everyone doesn't think we'll be here all day. Yeah. I, Kiki, I kind of agree with Keisha too, in terms of disagreeing with you. I, in my heart, I wish everyone was, had the heart of manners and were taught manners, but prime story, I was in Walmart. So if anybody doesn't know, I'm in Florida now and not that this doesn't happen anywhere else, but I'm in Florida, right, with, you know, the old white people and a ton of Hispanic people. And the man in front of me, and I I think she did miss, you know, mess up his order, you know, sent his thousand dollars, whatever, whatever. But he didn't communicate it clearly. And he said, I can't see the screen clearly. But then as soon as, of course, he's saying how he didn't, uh, he didn't communicate it correctly without fully taking responsibility. He was real quick to say, <clears throat> I need to talk to somebody who speaks English because you're not from this country and you need to learn how to speak English and a whole bunch of other things that were totally inappropriate that as a customer, I had to be like, all right, I don't know if she's not replying to him because she doesn't fully understand, but he's being really racist right now. So I need to step up and be like, sir, there's a difference in saying, can I ask for a manager and being just straight belligerent? Um, so yeah, there are some people, unfortunately, that just are, are jerks. And I know Keisha doesn't like when I say that they're jerks, but they're jerks. I forgot whatever politically correct thing she told me to call idiots, but people are idiots. 
Um, so, <laughs> so, okay. Um, that being said, sorry, Alyssa, what did you want to say? <laughs> Well, I forgot my original thought. Sorry. But just to, to, to go with the conversation, the one who said that when you just leave and take your business with you, that the person will eventually understand that there's something wrong with them. I just haven't found that to be the case. Yeah, they, they blame racism. They blame the system. They blame everything but them. So I'm trying to get comfortable with the idea of giving feedback. Because I do believe as a community, we have got to build businesses. Wealth is power. And we're always going to be powerless if we don't get that component together. And if we don't even want to work with one another, no, people aren't going to work with you. you know? And there are some things that we need to do differently. But if we don't tell people that, they don't know that. You know, exactly. We're not all raised yeah. to be polite. Where I was raised, that made you soft. That made people oh. just run over you. You know, you're trying to be better than everybody else. So that's something that some people have to move past. And if you're not in an environment where that's required, you don't even know what you don't know. That's so I do want to get better with that. To answer your question, no, I don't do it, but I want to. I want okay. to consciously make a point to start doing that. So really quick follow-up question. Follow up? RJ, I see your hand. Um, I'm sorry, Keisha. So how, and this might be exactly what you're going to ask Keisha. So Alyssa, in your case, like if you know that people are perceived to be soft, if they do provide a certain level of professionalism, how do you get through to those people and say, hey, maybe you should consider this, you know, and have them think differently? I'm sorry, my screen froze. That's okay. You need me to repeat it? Yeah, please. That's okay. No, I was saying just considering your background and certain people that like with certain people that don't know, right? Like what professionalism is or how to offer it because they think it might make them seem soft. How do you get through to them to understand like now you're a business owner and I know that's not how you were raised, but you should consider doing X, Y, Z. I'm not really sure. To be honest, that's where I was raised. It's not where I am now. So I'm not in that environment. She's like, I'm not around them no more. I don't know what they do. Not <laughs> not to say it like that but that's just the reality of it you yeah, know that's you, right. you move on and, but even for people who are not in that necessarily place I still see vestiges of that attitude where we're just not treating one another with respect just basic respect mm -hmm. we talk to each other like we know each that's other what you said, Kiki. Or something. And this is a business calm down I don't want to just start pushing them, not confrontationally but to let them know, you know, yeah, you have a nice restaurant, but I don't think I could come here anymore because of it took me 30 minutes to get this meal or you never even said, I'm sorry it took so long or, you know, just what the specific things are that I do not like to let people know that rather than just not patronize their business anymore. They know in Charlotte, we've lost a lot of what could have been potentially good restaurants because people don't come and yet we don't tell the owner what the issues are. Okay. So one, one action item we're all going to take is we're going to start giving feedback constructive, hopefully. Right. Okay. Go ahead, RJ. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I think we stumbled onto a really good conversation um, to piggyback off of what Alyssa was talking about. I was actually just reading out of a book last night. I'm not sure if you guys read the seven habits of highly effective people. It's a really freaking good book, but like in the, I'm still in the beginning, but what he was talking about in that book was like, um, how people like see their world and how they frame their world is basically um, based upon like how they were, you know, groomed up to see that vantage point. Right. And um, like you could be on two different sides of a war and you could still think you're the hero. Right. So the same thing goes with like customer service or bad customer service, good customer service. You could think that what you're doing is in all good and righteousness, right? You could think like, hey, the reason why I'm in this store acting this way or reason why I'm like the business owner acting in this situation is because that is what, you know, I grew around learning, seeing my environment, you know, what's worked in certain situations. But, you know, before we can really be able to change, um, you know, uh, what is good customer service and change these certain skills that we have to develop, we really have to have this kind of paradigm shift of like, um, you know, what is fundamentally right and wrong, you know, as far as like as a business owner now, right? We have to kind of have a new foundation. And to be quite honest with you, as far as black owned businesses, right? We we miss we are missing that kind of foundation. Whereas our counterparts, they kind of 
you know, have that kind of leverage step up on us where they're get they're passing on, okay, this is like the foundation, the foundation, the foundation is kind of give it to them, hand it and groom with them from very early age that we may or may not have as black owned businesses. So I really love what, you know, the idea of, you know, let's let's set up these foundations on these very basic skills, skills like customer service and skills like personal interpersonal relationship skills. And then we can build on our our God given, you know, skill sets to build successful businesses, but it kind of has to start from the ground. Love it. Tyron's going to do a workshop on interpersonal relationships. Um, but Tyron, before I get to you really quick, I think Keisha, did you still have something you want to say? Um, I just wanted to follow up to what Alyssa was saying as far as um, these the people that um, are doing these things. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember exactly the words, but basically they won't pick up on the fact that they're doing something wrong. They'll blame everybody else. And in my experience, those people are not going to be open to feedback anyway. So that's why I say yeah. I'm, I'm not big on unsolicited advice because if I go to that person and say, Look, I'm taking my business because of this, or this is what you did that I did not like. It's going to be like, oh, she's being a B or, you know, F her, you know, like all of that. It's, it's going to still be deflected and not really internalized. And that's been my experience. So that's why I kind of shy from now. There are some business that will say, you know, how can we be better? Oh, yeah, I'm going to give you feedback. Then if you're asking for it, if you're soliciting, I'm going to give you feedback. But um, it's been my those type of people. And I know those type of people you talk about are not going to be open to it anyway. So I agree with you. But suppose they just don't know because that's been my experience, too. Right. Like, for like nine out of 10 times, it's always not their fault. But what about that one time, that person that just didn't know, and they really are open to it, but they didn't know to ask for feedback. Isn't it worth trying to reach them? You can say no. I'll, I'll say this to you. Um, <laughs> I think I, I definitely think it is worth it, whether or not they agree with you or whether or not they even acknowledge which you say at the end of the day, at least I feel like for me, I've done my part. Even though I may not come back and, uh, and patronize this establishment again or this service again or whatever, I've at least done my part to say, you know what? And my whole point was actually what I was getting to was there's a way in which you can do that. You don't have to come off and be like, well, you know what? I ain't never coming back to this MF and establishment. And because you did it. But I the MF and part is the fun part. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You can write a letter. You can yeah. you know, do an email. You can do it. You know, you can, can do, do a it. survey. It doesn't have to be, you know, because it doesn't have to be a public. It doesn't even have to be a public thing for that matter. Because some some business owners or customers, even for that matter, take offense to be like, oh, why you had to put me on blast out in public when you could have pulled me aside and been like, hey, you know, I came to your establishment and this is what happened. And I really didn't care for. And you can have a civilized conversation. I really mm -hmm. think it's truly about a way in which you communicate to whether either a the customer because the customer can be dead wrong, as Kiki said earlier, or the business owner who can, you know, who can be given poor customer service as well to say, you know, hey, look, this is what I felt or this is what I saw or experienced. And this may be the reason why I choose not to establish, you know, come back to your establishment. I really think it's a way, you know, you treat people the way you truly want to be treated. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's not as easier said than done in a lot of situations. And Tia knows, for instance, there was a key example last Thursday where I was getting ready to cuss an establishment out. I mean, I got all hot, heated and ready. And it wasn't, you know, and there was a representative that said, you know what, we apologize, this, that and the third. But I, and I told him, I said, oh, I was getting ready to call you every name under the book. And I know you ain't even you just a representative of the company, <laughs> the person who I really wanted to talk to. But I was like, you know what? I appreciate it. And, you know, still gave the person a tip and went about my business. So I really think there's a way in which you can do it. And because customer service is key. I mean, for, for any industry and any business. Okay. And maybe right. as more of us do that, we reestablish the norm. So right. we're ready to do it this way. That's what we did because that's what we saw. But if enough people, so maybe the first time one of us says something, that owner doesn't respond. But by the 10th time, they can't just say, well, that's just that bitch, you know, <laughs> then you learn. So we just have to re refocus our, our culture mm -hmm. and do things differently because there's reasons that we react the way we react. Mm -hmm. All that stuff, what happened in Tulsa, and it is a lot. We got to unpack some of that stuff and just change it. 
Yeah. So one of the things that I do, I do a lot of learning. I've also read um, a lot of those books that you were mentioning, um, RJ, but one of the things that I do is, or one of the reasons why I started my branding consultancy was uh, because of another designer um, named Chris Doe. Um, he runs this, this YouTube channel that um, he runs this YouTube channel that talks about mm-hmm. how creatives can operate this creative businesses. And it's so interesting because his method of obtaining and, um, and getting those leads is completely different than what I've have heard in other areas and in other business and industries. And I realized that I couldn't use his, his tactics are very, very, very good, but I could not use his tactics. Honestly, I noticed with people of color because those tactics would be seen as, as rude in a lot of senses of the word. Um, and I noticed that with my own clients, I, I, when I started out, I tried using some of those tactics with people of color, with businesses, with business owners of, of color. And I didn't get that, those jobs because they saw it as rude. Mm-hmm. However, it worked perfectly fine with non-people of color. <laughs> <laughs> they respected me a lot and I was able to get a lot more uh, work and a lot more money from them using those tactics. And so I think a big portion of it is, is kind of cultural in a sense. And we have to figure out a way to mediate what the middle ground is for, you know, I guess, okay customer service. I think the middle ground is different across various areas, which makes it difficult for a lot of business owners to decide, okay, well, I know for me, I have to code switch. I have to code switch when I'm working with certain customers just because that level of customer service is different across all different types of people. And so that's that's something that we may have to establish if, you know, there, if a course is being built some form of middle ground would need to be established first uh, just because it's the same thing that works for us might seem soft to others. Right. And then, you know, we wouldn't get exactly what we deserve. You know, we wouldn't get paid what we deserve. We'd get more work than we need, you know, things like that. So it needs to be a course called like customer service for black people. (laughs) <laughs> yes <laughs> but that's true like maybe not as blunt but yeah i mean that's but you're exactly right yeah mm-hmm. that is exactly true okay um kiki and then adrian <clears throat> and then we'll kind okay. of wrap up. so um so just very quickly i wanted to kind of preface the point i made before like like i said and i i appreciate the the different points of view on that but like i said there's there's basic mm-hmm. basic levels of respect there's basic levels of of um of courtesy that people should know growing up and i say this because um you know i know i know to a bit like what uh, tj was saying that kind of thing like some things may work for others or whatever but basic level of respect works for everybody and i cannot and which is why i said these things start in the home these things start at home i cannot tell you how much it irritates me when i see a child that is rude and that rudeness is accepted as normal because i promise you like it, like my son cannot go somewhere with me and you know, say to a restaurant and be like, I want whatever. No, because he knows to say, may I have this please? Or can mm-hmm. I have this please? And you know what? There's been many times where like the waitresses or whatever have commented, oh, he's such a polite boy. And I'm looking at them like, yes, he is. He better be. He because, better. <laughs> you know, so so there, there, there's certain basics that need to be taught in the house. So it's all well and good at saying, well, people don't know. Then what, why don't people know? What are we doing with the, with, with the kids out here? Because I've been so many places where, all where, like I said, you, you see kids like yelling and I want this and da, 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 like being rude and everyone just kind of laughing it off or joking about. It. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, not in my house, not in my house. Okay. I'm, and my son better not do that outside. And that's 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 point blank. That's just how I feel about it. Now, um, which leads me to my next to the question I was going to ask, which is which is which is a bit of a spin on it. Like, how much responsibility? do we have as customers 
when we put our customer hat on, not, our, not we're not service providers now or product providers, but as customers, I was just kind of putting that out there. How much responsibility do we have in, in the level of the service that we get? And the reason I say that is because, like I said, there's been times when, because of my own frustrations, I have been rude to a waitress or rude to someone that's providing a service or, you know, customer service on the phone or whatever, because of my own frustration, which, like Tyron pointed out, this person was just, just a representative of the company. They're just doing their job. I'm upset about something, which is not their fault. They're just trying to do their job, you know, that kind of thing. But in that moment, I'm not getting the service that I'm wanting to get because I'm upset and it's my own frustration. So that's what kind of led me to that question. And um, again, another thing that led me to that to that thought is that um, we, we were at a restaurant recently and um, there was four of us ladies there. And one of the ladies said to the waitress, like, hey, I'm going to be leaving at eight o'clock because I have to go. So can I have my takeout box around then? Now the waitress brought everybody's bill at that time. And we we're like, no, wh why are you bringing a bill? We're still here. We haven't finished kind of thing, you know? And I, that really upset me because I was, I was like, well, why would you do that? Are you kicking us out? But she misunderstood that one person was leaving, but the rest of us were staying. So she didn't get, she, she misunderstood that. So, you know, I had to give grace in that understanding that no she misunderstood or whatever you know that kind of thing so um it gets me thinking we don't have to answer it here because of time but how much responsibility do we as customers have in the level of customer service that that we're or our customer service experience i should say no that's a great question actually we have a moment if anybody wants to <clears throat> adrian i'll let you um um, I don't know if you want to reply to that or if you just want to add, but if anybody else after Adrian wants to go ahead and reply to Kiki, because that is an amazing question. Um, go ahead, Adrian, what's your comment? I, I just wanted to share uh, a couple of uh, things that I found out specifically for customer service. Southwest does a group hiring where they get you in the room and they give you a topic and you got to go up and speak. What the people in the audience may not recognize is that they're looking for the people in the audience and how they respond to know whether those are the ones they want to hire. Because they know if you're not champion for somebody you don't know, you ain't necessarily going to champion for the person you're working with that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Zappos and Nordstrom's both have an history of uh, incredible customer service and they tell you how they created the customer service culture. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think what I'm hearing here the most is uh, what are some of the solutions that we can um, uh, use in our businesses that would help us to garner a great customer service? Definitely hiring is the first piece. And mm -hmm. if it's self to know when it's time to get an assistant mm -hmm. because yeah. growth means you must at some point relinquish some of the control so that one, you can get uh, someone in there that can believe in your business growing and two, to learn that someone else is a strength to you when you choose right. It's a strength to you. You know, and, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, and, and to Kiki, I was just going to say that there is no way to know if someone is having a good day. Uh, but what I've learned from being a hairstylist for over 35 years is when I talk slower and lower, you have to listen harder for what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And it stops your mind from having dual conversations about what you want, who you are, and who you're dealing with. So the person that you're dealing with, if they just talk low. You now begin to strain to try to hear them. And it changes the atmosphere almost immediately because now they have to, what? What are you saying? There's nothing more I want to do than to make sure this is your best day leaving here. How can I do that for you? Right then, she, she's this, but that's a training. Mm -hmm. But my, I, I, I learned it because like, I'm a chess player, so I'm always thinking of the strategic way to get the okay. advantage as quick as I can. Okay. 
That's an amazing tip. You got a couple hearts on that as well. So love that tip. Definitely to put that <clears throat> in our notes as well. And I like how you touched on and um, to kind of piggyback what you touched on and really to kind of answer Kiki's question. I think RJ or somebody else said it earlier, outsourcing. Like I may not be as big as I'm going to be, but I know that customer service, even on a good day for me, sometimes is a struggle because I might not be having a bad day, but sometimes I just don't feel like talking to people or I may not reply, you know, like I know Alyssa sent me the message um, on, on meetup. And sometimes I really have to like reread what I write to make sure that what is in my head doesn't come out in a way that somebody that doesn't know me, you know, doesn't take it the wrong way. So sometimes if we don't, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes the customer service is not our strongest skill set. There is nothing wrong with outsourcing, even if you're still small business. The, you know, that's one of the things, another takeaway I want people to understand. There are people that can help you um, and you don't have to have a lot of money and they can do things on your behalf as long as you give them the directive um, to do so. So that's another, you know, takeaway. So I'm glad um, you all mentioned that. And then same thing, Keith, to kind of answer your question. That's one thing, you know, from putting myself in customer shoes that I know I, you know, would, would, um, yeah, recommend. Okay. Um, Thank you for watching our panel about customer service. I know that you've got a lot of value from it, whether you're a business owner or whether you're a customer supporting some of our entrepreneurs of color. There was something in there that we all can take away, whether it's creating a plan or just giving feedback to the businesses that you relate to or the businesses that you read about. We all can stand to improve, and I challenge each and every one of you to take a step today to help another business owner do better and be better. It will positively impact all of us. After all, that golden rule is not just the age-old adage. We do need to make sure that we are treating people in all aspects of our lives the way that we want to be treated, whether we're a customer or if we're a business owner. Now, if you'd like to be featured, if you want to sponsor, or you just have questions about the Entrepreneur Insider Show, you can reach me directly. Email me at info at theblackentrepreneursnetwork.com. Now, as always, this show is brought to you in partnership with Relationship Entertainment Television. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that red subscribe button at the bottom right of your screen and stay tuned to their wide array of positive television programming brought to you right here on YouTube and a local Facebook streaming channel near you. Now, until next time, I want all of you to be great and thank you again for watching. Thank you.